So recently I um, did a little bit of research and I found some fountain pen inks that while not touted as being waterproof, tend to be waterproof. And I actually found this list over at JetPen. So I wrote down, down the ones that I hadn't tried yet, thought were the most likely, or that I was just interested in giving a shot. And then I placed my order <laughs> through Goulet pins because I wanted to sample them and show them to you today. So over the past um, few months, I have been doing a lot of experimentation with using fountain pens for inking. These are all pigment-based inks. And I was, I am very interested in both pigment based inks and non pigment based inks. So um, these should be dye based inks, with the exception of some iron gall inks, which I also ordered. So we're going to talk about the non iron gall inks first, and then we're going to talk about the iron gall inks. And um, I've already taken a look at the rower and clinger. Uh, some of their offerings so you can check out this channel for more on that so I have five non iron gall and four iron gall we're gonna be looking at pilot Irishizuku Kirisame Kerndosh ultraviolet and I'm having trouble speaking today diamine Udenil platinum forest black wait this one actually might be a I believe that's an Iron Gall. Pilot Namiki Blue. Then for Iron Gall, Platinum Lavender Black. Platinum Khaki Black. Platinum Cassis Black. Platinum Citrus Black. And Platinum Forest Black. So we're going to start with the non-Iron Gall inks and we're gonna start with Pilot Iroshizuku. And in case you are not familiar with how I do my tests, I kind of do them. It, um, so this is a waterproof test. This is on watercolor paper. This is um, fluids, cellulose based, so wood pulp or paper as we tend to think of it, base watercolor paper. So it does have a texture, but it's more similar to paper. So inks that tend to bond with cellulose should work with this sort of watercolor paper. And um, I use a dip pen because they're easier to clean. Now I usually use a G nib. I cannot find my G nib in my hoard of a messy studio. So we're gonna go with a Kuratake Seijo nib and um, we start with the immediate waterproof test and then we allow inks to dry for 24 hours for further testing. So we're gonna start with Pilot Irushizuku Kirisame. And this might be a little finer than I'd like because we wanna get a nice thick line because I like using flexible, I like using flexible fountain pen nibs for my art. So, going to draw some lines in there and this is the immediate for as soon as it dries and this is the 24 hour dry time and then we're going to clean off our nib wipe it down cap this super tight don't want that evaporating any further they did wait on my desk for a couple weeks while I was out of town Next, Karen Dosh Ultraviolet. And I'm working on compiling a fairly comprehensive list of waterproof inks as I encounter them. And I will release that um, either on my blog or directly to my backers on Patreon. But that isn't available yet because there's so many inks and I haven't tried them. I haven't even tried a lot of them. I've just tried a few. And by a few, I mean <laughs> less than 100, but possibly nearing 50. And inks that pass this stage of the test are later, um, I'll do like a more serious watercolor illustration with them. And you can check those out at onceuponatime.tumblr.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. Diamine Udenil. Water of the Nile. It's beautiful turquoise color, according to the internet. And when I was 
doing my research, I ignored any inks that showed significant movement because um, fountain pen people tend to consider waterproof anything that is pretty much still easily legible after water has been um, added or dripped on or washed on or however it is applied and watercolor artists do not consider that waterproof by any shake. So uh, when I was first buying inks, I was trying to buy a good mix and I was pretty frustrated that a lot of the inks that were supposed to be waterproof, marketed as waterproof, were not at all waterproof. It's like, what the heck? You guys should know better. Um, but the definitions just differ. So I do try to test for that and be specific in um, my reviews. In fact, I now refer to inks that um, move somewhat, but are not affected after the first water application as self-shading inks. And those might be something well worth looking into. And I'm working on a post about those as well once I have a significant number of self-shading inks. So when I do fountain pen reviews, fountain pen ink reviews, it is more for artists than it is for um, say writing enthusiasts and I've earned the ire of a few fountain pen people but I've also gotten some really fantastic suggestions on inks to try and I'm working on amassing a comprehensive collection so if there is an ink you think I should try and it's available in sample form that's always always the the kicker because I can't afford to buy you know 13 to 30 dollar bottles of ink just to test them so if you want to send me a sample I'm working on getting a PO box set up because I'd really like to review the KWZ iron gall inks and um, supposedly many of their inks have waterproof properties so these are our waterproof inks I'm going to give um, them a little bit more time to dry and I'm gonna grab another watercolor block and we'll do the iron gall inks so this is what the pads look like that I'm doing my testing on and those are pretty easy to find all right, Platinum Lavender Black. I don't always share these tests with you guys um, because they're not always interesting. I don't always have something engaging to say while doing this. But to be honest, um, I am testing such a sizable collection of inks today. I wanted to get credit for it. And don't worry, I'll zoom in when I'm doing the water test. It's a beautiful color. Problem with fountain uh, iron gall inks is they supposedly turn black as they oxidize. That means as uh, you know they're exposed to the oxygen in the air. I have some rower and clinger. I have scabiosa and um, salix and I've done some pieces with them and they haven't noticeably turned black but they're self-shading inks. That means the dye in them will move after you've allowed them to dry, but then they only move once. So you can paint over it without too many negative effects. Um, and that would, if they do turn black, that would negatively affect the integrity of the illustration, I believe. Um, at least unless you've taken like specific precautions or you've planned around that. So, um, while I love the colors, you know, I do kind of hesitate to use them. I do like using them in my journal though. All right, Platinum Khaki Black. And again, I'll zoom in when it's time to add water. I wanna get all those caps back on nice and tight. Don't want to lose ink or affect ink quality to evaporation while we're testing. All right, three to go. Cassis Black. And I am rinsing my nib in water and then removing all of the water from the nib using a paper towel, I'm trying to keep everything. Ooh, that's a beautiful color. And Platinum makes some great pigment inks. They also make 
some great, fairly affordable fountain pens. I really like the Platinum Cool. In fact, I have a pink extra fine or fine, I have to double check, Platinum Cool that I need to do a comparative review for you guys because I have the medium and clear and I found that that was actually a little bit thicker than I wanted. I've been told that Japanese fountain pens tend to run finer, so I ordered finer than I thought I, I mean, larger than I thought I would use and it's a little large for me. So I am ordered a smaller size. All right, Platinum Citrus Black. Oh, look at that. I'd been wanting a nice yellow. Look at that color. That is truly a nice lemony, citrusy color. That'll be interesting to see how that oxidizes over time. And then finally, Forest Black. And I have been super eager to try out these Platinum Iron Gall inks. Just had to wait until they returned in sample form. And I know there's some contention about Iron Gall inks ruining your pens. So what I usually do is I usually use these in my Platinum Preppies. Very inexpensive little pens like $4 each, so if it gets wrecked, you know, that's four bucks. Better than 20 bucks or more. Okay, so I'm gonna let those dry, clean off my nib, and we're gonna head back over to the supposedly, allegedly, the proposedly waterproof inks, according to Jet Pens. And here we have a water brush that looks like it needs to be refilled, so I will return. Now what I love about water brushes for this sort of procedure is that they scrub de scrub with their nylon bristles. That means if there is a chance of your ink picking up while you're painting with your wonderful nice uh, soft synthetics or wonderful nice real sables, um, you know, this will replicate sort of the amount of scrubbing a piece might see over the entire duration. So let's go ahead and do the immediate application. Ooh, a little bit of color chromatography there. But this isn't a bad amount of movement. Uh, usually there's gonna be some movement with an immediate application. I think in some of my tests, I allow them to dry for one hour. I will, however, be consistent and allow the second line to dry for 24. Because um, when you're doing comics and you're working with inks, you either, you want to at least give your line art an hour to dry and ideally 24. So getting movement with all of these, still legible, still kind of fitting the, the fountain pen artist definition of what, what um, waterproof is, but we're going to let these dry for 24 hours and see if those second lines fare any better. Now my um, <laughs> my iron gall inks, there we go, are still drying, taking a little longer. It's a very wet day today in Nashville, so I'm really not surprised and I'm really not surprised that these have moved a bit because, sorry that was off camera, because it's so humid today I'm sure they didn't fully get a chance to dry. So I'm going to clean up my desk and allow the sheen on my iron gall inks to disappear and then we'll try those as well. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, these have had a little bit of a chance to dry. So we're gonna start with lavender black. And as expected, of course, that color moves. Platinum khaki black. Some movement, but less. Platinum Kessie's black. Platinum citrus black. I love that color though, it's so bright. And then platinum forest black. Ooh, that's more like a like a 
<sighs> like a uh, lime, sorry. Dang. Okay, so I'm going to let both of these pads dry out overnight. And then we're going to see about color fastness after 24 hours. So I'll check in with you guys then. All right, guys, it's been about 24 hours since we last visited these. So it's time to go over the second set of lines with some water. And we're gonna start again in the same order we began last time. So the Kirasame. Fair bit more waterproof than it was yesterday. Although, you know, you are still getting some color migration. And there's still a little bit of interesting color chromatography. There's just a little bit of yellow in there to help sort of mute that color down. Next up, ultraviolet. Fair bit of movement with that as well. All right, you Danielle. Lots of movement, about as much as yesterday. And that's gonna be the dyes. The dyes are gonna, you know, they can dry, but they'll still move a fair bit. And Namiki Blue, less movement, but still some. All right, that doesn't make these completely, or just doesn't put this, the, blah, blah, blah. it doesn't put these completely out of the running though. We're going to test to see if these will work as self-shading ink. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go over to the set of lines from yesterday. They've had a full 24 hours to dry. We're gonna try to drag that color out. So, uh, Kirisame works as a self-shading ink. Oh, I was in the wrong one there. Let's go back up to the top. Looks like ultraviolet works as a self-shading ink. Mmm, Udin, nil. <laughs> there we go. Also works as a self-shading ink. That's exciting. I haven't really found too many self-shading inks. Oh yeah, awesome. And the Mickey Blue. So, all of these inks do not exactly work as, um, say, watercolor inks, but they do work as self-shading inks. So once the water has been applied, they're not going anywhere. Let's switch on over now to those beautiful Iron Gall inks. Going to do the same thing. So, less movement today than yesterday. I may need to go refill my water brush. Be right back. Alrighty, khaki black. Seems to be less movement, but as you can see, you do get some bleeding out as the water kind of soaks in and reactivates those dyes. Cassis black. These are all beautiful colors. There's no reason not to give them a try, even if they won't work for watercolor. Citrus black. Still have a little bit of pink on my pen. Really like that color. And then forest black, which actually seems to have the least amount of movement. All right, so we're gonna go back in, same thing we did on the last test, and see if these will work as self-toning inks. So starting nice and deep in there. The answer to that is no, because there's still some movement. All right, khaki black. Mm, maybe passably so, I don't see much movement. Cassis black. A little bit of pink, but not too much. And honestly, you could probably use lavender black the same way. Citrus black works as a self-toning ink. And forest black works as a self-toning ink. So all of the inks tested in the past couple of days will work as self-toning inks. And if you're interested in seeing how to use those, you can check out my Rower and Clinger Scabiosa and Scalix, or Salix, sorry, tutorial on using self-toning inks, or you can keep an eye on this channel. I will probably do further demonstrations as I continue to work with these inks. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out my fountain pen playlist and consider subscribing, especially if you enjoy art and art education. If you're looking for more fountain pen goodness from me, check out onceuponatime.tumblr.com. And if you enjoy my art, not that you could see it here, make sure you check out my webcomic 7inchcara.com or at 7inchcara.tumblr.com for an adorable watercolor webcomic. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope to see you again really soon and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye!